A lot of people have been asking me lately, Yachty, are you ever going to start an Iron Man? And my simple answer is, no, I do not want to play that game mode. However, it got me thinking, okay? It got me thinking. If I were to restart a profile, not an Iron Man profile, sorry, Iron Man players. If I were to restart a profile, what would I do? So today I want to walk you guys through the most efficient first day or most efficient 24 hours, however you want to take it. Maybe it'll take you a couple days of your new profile. Whether you got ratted, whether you're new to the game, this is what you should be doing if you want to progress the fastest. Before we get into it, I do want to ask you guys to please scroll down and subscribe. We are going for 30k and the YouTube rank. Every subscription helps me out immensely. I will also be live as this video goes live at twitch.tv slash yojati. Make sure to check me out there. We are going for partner. Every viewer counts. Please check me out there. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So the tips for starting a new profile basically start like this. They're even before the profile starts. You can be efficient with when you start your profile. For example, if you start it on the first of any month, there will be something called a bingo going on. Why does this matter? You're not going to be starting a bingo profile. You're not going to be doing anything with bingo. Oh, but you are. When you first start out, you're going to be broke. You have no money. You're not going to be able to buy a god pot. God pots are, uh, they matter a lot. So instead of buying a god pot, if you start a profile during a bingo, you can join Bingo Brewers Discord, which is linked in my Discord. If you guys need an invite, uh, discord.gg slash COGID, otherwise it's linked below. And you can steal the splashes that are meant for bingo players. Usually this is kind of scummy. I don't think it's very scummy because you're literally going to be level 1 to 5 to 10 to 20, whatever it is. You probably need the splashes too. And this will save you money and also allow you to progress through the early game way faster. Another very important thing is visiting Portal Hub. All you have to do is type visit Portal Hub and you click on his island and you will be here. He has every single cake for you, as do I on my island if you want to visit Yachty instead. But the cool thing about his island is he has every single warp. So for example, if you don't have warp nucleus unlocked or if you can't use it because you're not MVP plus, all you have to do, warp here, there's Warp Nucleus, or same thing with Dwarven's Mine, same thing with Trapper's Den. It's just an easier, faster way to get around. I would highly recommend doing this. The last thing I would recommend if you are a new player, at, right as you're getting started, is just go through your quest log, try to do as many quests as you can. You can start working on Fairy Souls, or you can save Fairy Souls for later, but just try to familiarize yourself with the game. Try to unlock as many areas as you can, do like the Lumberjack quest, do the Bartender quest, just try to figure out sort of what's going on with the game before you start investing your time into trying to be the most efficient. Because it is still a game. You still want to understand what you're supposed to be doing. And without further ado, your first day goals. Number one should be to unlock Dwarven Mines. Dwarven Mines is a very important part for early game players. You can do your daily commissions, start working on Heart of the Mountain 10. You have things such as Fetcher which give you 10,000 coins and some mithril powder. You have things such as, such as the puzzler, which gives you mithril powder. By the way, all these are multiplied by times two powder. In order to unlock dwarven mines, you need to travel to the deep caverns, head all the way down to the obsidian sanctuary and talk to Reese. You need to give Reese 10 enchanted sets of mining materials. The easiest ones to obtain and probably the cheapest are 10 enchanted lapis, 10 enchanted coal, and 10 enchanted redstone. Unfortunately, you cannot just mine 30 enchanted redstone, give it to him, swap, lobby swap, give it to him again. That has been patched. But that's the fastest way to do it. Uh, you do also need mining level 12, so if you are not mining level 12 by the time you make it all the way down to Reese, you can head on over to the desert. You can just mine sand, it's very quick. All you need is an efficiency five golden shovel. I don't even know if you need the efficiency five. I believe you do, but I'm not positive and that should get you mining level 12 in no time. The next thing I would do before even starting to go for Dwarven Mines is I would head over to the hub, I would mine some wheat to get like 40k coins, and then I would head right over here to B and I would purchase myself a common B pet. Why would I do this? It gives 30 strength at max level, 10 speed, 50 intelligence, you're gonna get it at level one, it's not gonna be that great. Well, the reason why is for taming XP. Taming XP is a very good skill to start leveling up. As you level up skills, you start to get coins, which 
is something you're going to need for later, as well as the fact that you might as well be gaining taming XP because you're basically wasting taming XP if you don't have a pet equipped. If you want to do some other pet, if you end up dropping an Enderman or you or it's Diana like it is now and you want to buy a Griffin, feel free to do that as well. It's just the B pet is very cheap, very easy way to start getting taming levels. The next thing you should instantly do is try to get yourself a cookie. Now, in order to get a free cookie, if you've never played the game before, I believe you need to be Skybook level 7 or Skybook level 10 before you can go into the community center and you can access your free cookie. But you should be getting a cookie because number one, you don't lose coins on death. You don't lose potion effects on death. You can fly on your island. It should be your first purchase ever. I know they are 9 mil a pop, I understand that. But it's sh it still should be your first purchase because it's going to progress you through, it's going to give you more magic find. It's going to progress you through all these skills faster because of the skill XP buffs. As well as the fact that if you did not start during a bingo and you can't steal god splashes, you definitely should be buying a god pot. God pots are also kind of pricey. You can buy a god pot with the bits you get from your cookie or you can just straight up buy it off of AH. Either one is fine, but you should always have a god pot going. The other thing that I would specifically do is I would take any old weapon, I would come over here to the weaponsmith, I'd buy an undead sword, and I'd come over here and I'd start enchanting it. Here's the cool thing about enchanting. If you put anything on an item, you gain enchanting XP. If you take any enchant off of an item, you gain enchanting XP even for taking it off. So you can spam this or you can build your undead sword, but the goal here is to get enchanting level 10 so that you can buy yourself an experimentation table. One experience bottle surrounded by oak logs. It'll give you access to this enchanted minigame on your island. At level 10, you won't be able to play Chronometron or Ultra Sequencer, but you can do super pairs. You should be doing super pairs and Chronometron and Ultra Sequencer as soon as you unlock them every single day. It is the most efficient way to level up enchanting there is no more efficient way you can also get yourself a guardian pet but obviously not right now because this is a beginner's guide but the goal is to do experiments every single day you also have a chance at dropping some rare enchants as you get towards the end of that now i talked about a cookie i talked about a god pot i'm talking about a lot of stuff that costs a pretty solid amount of money that an early game player probably isn't going to have access to well here's where you make your money so first of all, you're going to head over to Dwarven Mines. This is also why unlocking Dwarven Mines is the most important part of your progress because you're going to find these things called Treasure Hoarders. This is popularized by Swavy. I tested it. Still makes like 14 to 16 mil an hour depending on how efficient you are. There are three Treasure Hoarder spawns outside of that little pocket. So there's one down there that you'll have to kill and he'll sometimes spawn in this bridge. One here and one here as well as three spawns inside of here. What you want to do is you want to buy yourself an Aurora Staff. However you can get your hands on about 1.3 mil, you will be able to buy yourself a... Well, I didn't buy it. You'll be able to buy yourself an Aurora Staff. Why is this weapon so good? Well, number one, you should be enchanting... Now, I don't have hexes disabled right now, so I'm not going to do it. But you should be enchanting this thing with Looting 4. Looting 4 costs, I don't know, 70k, like nothing. It'll increase your draft by a lot. And you're just going to come over here and you're going to one tap. There's a little bit of cooldown on it, but as long as you are uh, like within 20 blocks of them and aiming at anywhere on their body, as long as you have your cursor on their body, they should be free kills. You can kill all six and cycle them before they end up respawning, which is very good. Doing this, you will make about 14 mil an hour just based off of the Starfall. But don't sell the Starfall as it is, what you want to do is head over to the forge located here and talk to the forger. You want to convert your starfall into power crystals that sell for 800k per. Always sell off for power crystals. There is no excuse to be insta selling them. You don't need the money that bad. When you first start out, I believe you only have two casting slots, and as you level up your heart of the mountain, you will unlock more casting slots, capping at heart of the mountain five with all five unlocked. At Heart of the Mountain 2, you can also unlock Quick Forge, which decreases the time it takes to forge into Power Crystals. Because each one of these bad boys takes two hours to forge into a Power Crystal. It can be sped all the way up to, I believe, an hour 40 or maybe even faster. 
you should be converting them into power crystals but here's the thing is they're gonna farm starfall more or like way faster than you can turn them into power crystals so you're basically just gonna have to keep checking out on your forge converting them selling them keep checking out on your forge converting them selling them what i would do is i would grind around a hundred mil before moving on to my farming guide which i will also have linked in the description have in the upper right corner because i believe that you should delve yourself into farming get to end game farming before you start doing any other skill you can also do it with mining but i would recommend farming hold on boys bestiary downtime i do still need powder gas as a bestiary all right fuck all right yadi i have a way to grind money this is kind of boring what else do i need to be doing for early game well i'm glad you asked you should be getting down redstone minions get as many redstone minions as you can down i would get them to about tier five you can buy the materials off bazaar with the money you're making from treasure hoarders or you can farm them in dwarven mines an easy way to find redstone to farm is to come right over here and if you have purchased an aote you're going to jump off this spot and you are going to come find this right here and there's just a bunch of redstone emerald lapis diamond you can work on your collections as well whatever you want to do i would also recommend trying to unlock 10 minion slots i mean getting 10 minion slots should be absolutely free Minions are very easy to get. You can either buy materials. I mean, you do have to unlock the minion itself, so you do have to farm the materials a little bit, which can be farmed through collections. But I would try to unlock at least 10 minion slots, get redstone minions down. The reason why you want redstone minions down is because you want to start working on your accessory bag upgrades in order to hold more talismans. Speaking of talisman, you should come over. You should have talked to Maxwell before. If you haven't talked to Maxwell, talk to Maxwell now. Powers are very important things that give you stat bonuses, but more importantly, your stat bonuses are based off of your magical power, which is based off of how many talisman or accessories you have in your accessory bag. I'm just going to name off a bunch of easy talismans that can be purchased for under 500k. If you don't know what talismans you should be going for, feel free to join the Discord, discord.gg slash yadi, it's linked in the description. Go into the bot command channel and type slash missing. This will show you what talismans you need, what talismans you don't have requirements for, what you should go for in terms of how, how much it costs per MP. It's very, very useful. But as for here, I will name them off. Easy talismans that can be purchased for under 500k are the farming talisman, the skeleton talisman, talisman of coins, village affinity talisman, mine affinity talisman, scavenger talisman, gravity talisman, wood affinity talisman, night vision charm, mineral talisman, magnetic talisman, Fish Affinity Talisman, Lava Talisman, the Emerald Ring, the Fire Talisman, the Farmer Orb, the Haste Ring, the Feather Artifact, the Potion Affinity Artifact, the Healing Ring, the Sea Creature Artifact, the New Year Cake Bag, and the Piggy Bank. If you're curious about how to obtain these, head over to wiki.hypixel.net. Otherwise, just buy them off of AH. Other talisman that are worth mentioning, but that you cannot buy them because they are soulbound, but they are definitely something you could get on your first day or first 24 hours is your melody's hair now if you have lower ping it's going to be a lot easier but melody's hair which is found in the park your book of progression which is gotten from leveling up your skyblock level pig's foot which is gotten from the end race wolf's paw which is gotten from the park race archaeologist's compass which is gotten from the archaeologist and the spider's den a bat person talisman which usually can be bought for around 250k a yellow rock of love which is gotten from doing the romero and juliet quest the Cheetah Talisman, I don't think you can actually get all the way up to Cheetah, but the Dungeon Races Talisman. The Campfire Badge, which is found at the Park Campfire, and the King Talisman for talking to each king as they cycle through every day in Dwarven Mines. With all of these obtained, you should have a bunch of easy starter MP. I'd estimate anywhere between four to 600. I'm not really positive, but 400 sounds about right. Easy reforges that you wanna be using. There's basically only two. You either want to, you wanna buy Sighted, which can be gotten by buying Ender Monocles for 9K per, or if you wanna buy order them and save money for 1.1K per, as well as Silky, which can be bought with the luxurious spools. You need nine of each, you throw them in learn power and you will learn their power. Silky is very good because it offers a lot of crit damage as well as a little bit of bonus attack speed. This will be very good for your melee, as well as if you need more intelligence, if you're using the AOTE to TP all around, you can buy yourself sighted. I would also recommend just buying an AOTE off of AH. This is an AOTV because it's upgraded, but they're just super nice. You can use them to get around. It's very cheap. It's like 200K. 
and if you're farming treasure hoarders this should be no money at all once i have my aurora staff i would head right over to the ice walkers and i would start farming them i would also put lux six on my aurora staff as well so it should have looting from when you're grinding the treasure hoarders because that affects your rates a lot and you can throw lux six on and lux six is going to heavily increase the armor drops from monsters and since the, uh, the bestiary update, they have heavily increased the spawns of ice walkers. You won't be able to kill them all, and it should be going very, very well. This would this is what I would do for my first set of armor because of the true defense makes it very tanky, as well as the regular defense. The bonus speed, which helps with movement speed, as well as more mining speed, which will help with your comms immensely. I would not grind them with a pickaxe, even though you can, because of the fact that the pick doesn't have luck six or looting on it. And I believe that on a starter profile, you should be able to one tap them with an Aurora staff. The last thing I would try to do on my first day is unlock the end. Now the end is unlocked at combat 12. You should be getting a lot of combat from farming treasure hoarders, as well as a lot of combat from farming ice walkers. It should not be that hard to get combat 12 and that will introduce you to the end. Other goals in the end are to go walk through, there should be a, uh, a dude sitting right here that I think I think his name is the lost adventurer or he'll be sitting right here try to do his quest try to get your access to a void sword because a void sword is gonna be very strong in terms of a melee weapon I wouldn't even go for a raider's axe anymore personally you can also kill the enderman by just right clicking them with an aurora staff just like that I dropped ender leggings they're not very hard to drop um, you can also melee them if you are strong enough from here I would start getting invested into farming. Again, I have the guide linked below. Uh, fully comprehensive guide. That's what I would do. I would try to take farming to an endgame skill so that you're making a lot of money and then use that money to branch out into the other skills. But again, this is your profile. Do whatever you want to do. This is how I would restart Skyblock. I would try to get all of this done either within a day or within 24 hours. And it sets me up perfectly for progressing out of early, early game. So if you guys did enjoy, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord, discord.gg slash yogiati. Follow the Twitch, twitch.tv slash yogiati. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know if this guide helped you. I, uh, I had a lot of fun making it, to be honest. Have a good one, boys. Peace.